I want to make a quick video overviewing the main concepts for explaining star evolution, which is planet formation, according to the general theory of stellar metamorphosis. The abstract is stated, since it is known in alternative scientific communities that planet formation is star evolution itself via the general theory of stellar metamorphosis, some basic concepts are needed to piece together the puzzle. Neg negligence of these concepts in application to any model concerning star evolution, planet formation, are more than likely incomplete or false. Just to let people know how much is on my plate, and that I'm not trying to be ignoring of any concept here, I'll go ahead and go over it with you guys. Generalized, this starts on page 14 when I link it to the bottom of this YouTube video. The generalized differentiation of the star during early evolution to a fully differentiated star similar to Earth. Basically, that process needs to be overviewed. Chemistry, including thermochemistry, electrochemistry, acids, bases, redox reactions, aqueous solutions during redox reactions, reagents, products, catalysts, oxidation and reduction, you know, oil rig, that mnemonic. The increasing, decreasing strength of gravitation of the star is sub subsequently born and evolves, as well as the actual role of gravitation during stellar birth. Changing pressures, high, low, electromagnetic forcing, internally and external layers in the star as it evolves. Fleming's right-hand rule for generators, Fleming's left-hand rule for electric motors. Temperature, heat, endothermic, and exothermic reactions. The evolution of heat internal and external. Real radiative zones, real convective zones, real conductive zones between different chemical compounds and phases and their changing nature. Hot areas, cold areas, medium temperature areas. Activation energy provided by gravitation, friction. Enthalpies of formation, that is incredibly complex. Temperature gradients, really complex as well. Uh, the, the evolution of the heat as it moves towards the internal regions of the star as it evolves from a homogeneous to a differentiated structure. Isothermal processes, adiabatic processes, trans concepts such as Peltier effect, Seebeck effect, Ohm's law, properties of all elements, not just elements lighter than oxygen or lithium. Different elements have different, cri different critical points, triple points, ionization energies, different weights, different magnetic properties. Basically, style evolution revolt or relies on every single element doing everything that it does as it evolves inside of the star naturally when it forms chemical compounds. Changes in diameter of the stars evolves, big to medium to small, meaning population one stars are big, the A, B, O, F, G, K, M, or, you know, phonetically it's the Alpha, Bravo, Oscar, Fox, Golf, Kilo, Mike. <laughs> Population 2 stars, medium sized classes of brown dwarfs, blue dwarfs, list some examples that I have here. Uh, LTY, meaning Lima, Tango, Yankee. Population 3 stars are small, Earth, Kepler 326, Delta. I'm going to go over that one, that looks like an interesting one. Population 4 stars are dead worlds, small like Mercury. Changes in mass, including changes in rate of mass loss to solar flaring, coronal mass ejections, radiations, impact, impacts, and photo evaporation. Like, how much mass can be lost to photo evaporation from outside of the star? This also would rest on distance from host and the time kept in that close orbit. How much, how much mass is lost to coronal mass ejections and solar flaring? Let's see, how much mass is lost to impacts? This is a good point I brought up earlier. Mass loss to impacts can only occur when the gravitational field is not strong enough to hold all the material meaning the velocity of the impact shrapnel overcomes the escape velocity of the parent object, leaving rings, and sometimes those pieces of matter and shrapnel leave the star, becoming what's called an asteroid. How big does the gravitational field have to be for the star to have rings? How cold? Do radiation belts prevent ring formations? Changes in stellar density. Vacuum-like to thick gas to supercritical, and then the solid and liquid material. And this all liquid material can be further classified as being mechanical and engineering for engineering purposes, involving stress, strain, compression of rocks, decompression, 
you know, the basic losing of the atmosphere to where it rebounds and comes back in again and makes the rocks fold, which plate tectonics seems to ignore. Length of specific phases of evolution over short, long periods of time, deep time orbit changes. Catastrophism, more with younger stars versus uniformitarianism, more with older stars. Very fast, medium, and very slow changes. Um, fast changes are like CMEs. Lava and pyroclastic flows would be medium between the two, and crystal growth, weathering, and resedimentation would be uniformitarianism. Impacts versus slow mass loss references population 1, 2, and 3 stars. Notice how this is much different than Bade's classification of them based off the Big Bang model, which is absolutely false. In reference to how damaging an impact would really be. Make note of the material being collected in the interiors by much wider stars as they act as dust traps, which have large gravitational wells to allow larger objects to get swallowed. Stars as giant mass collectors. And mass accretion from one star to the, to the other is strange as they both, lo both lose mass to interstellar space. Accreting, the accreting model is, is, is absolutely bogus. Uh, mass loss to CMEs and flares, mass loss to photo evaporation, mass loss to impacts. And then you have orbit changes requiring deep time. The atmosphere would protect the inner evolution of the star. Maybe being ripped from orbit would happen quickly, but settling to a stable orbit would, would allow for stability of evolution. It would set specific stages of evolution on a fast, slow, or medium track due to the location of a new orbit in reference to the host star's light and heat. That's a very advanced concept, and that would that could take a PhD in itself. As well, photoevaporation would only impact the lightest of molecules, elements, surface molecules, and elements. This is why evolved stars are comprised mostly of heavier elements and rock-like molecules. Bonding also plays a large role. Material that is bonded strongly will remain intact for much longer periods of time, even in the presence of highly ionizing radiation, such as the triple bond between nitrogen gas or nitrogen atoms, making nitrogen gas as a triple bond in there. That's one big reason why there's still nitrogen on the surface of the Earth, I think. I'll have to review that as well. That's why I put the notes here. A good surface to examine to to examine to study how long-term photoevaporation would impact a dead star or stellar remnant would be the moon. Moon rocks carry a lot of information. We have here stress being part of an adopted family. The objects in our solar system are not related to each other, not dependent on each other's evolutionary path, except for the types of mass loss created by the stages of evolution their host stars are in. The likelihood of retrograde orbits because of capture. And, you know, deep time and how a creationist philosophy completely ignores deep time. And you have thermodynamic phase transitions, including plasma, which includes monatomic, diatomic, and polyatomic molecules, gas, liquid, solid material, and specific mixtures as they evolve and combine into more complex mixtures and solutions. Condensation, solidification, deposition, recombination, vaporization, melting, sublimation, and ionization. Types of matter interaction, effusion of supercritical matter, osmosis, Stress solutions which which can sustain free ions without being a plasma. Electrolytic solutions are very important when they cross barriers. Anions and cations in a plasma and other aqueous solutions. That's good for electroplating purposes concerning the for core formation of the earth. And it says here, can complex mixtures ionize and what would happen to them? And also I have thermodynamics here. Stars are not closed systems. That only suits equations for the fantasy fusion model which they ignore where the heat is being produced on the surface only as the star is young. I have to write that in here. Define open systems, closed systems, the laws, non-equilibrium th equilibrium thermodynamics, meaning the temperature of the star should not match or should not match the temperature of outer space. And that's non-equilibrium thermodynamics. If it matched the temperature of outer space, it would be in equilibrium, but for a later talk, I'll show people that the mathematicians, they ignore the star's radiative properties on the surface of it, and they focus on their fantasy fusion model. But anyways, the first law of thermodynamics, have to have that in there. The second law, heat always flows from the hotter to the colder. That was simple. Third, laws of third law of thermodynamics, it is impossible for any procedure to lead to the isothermal temperature equal equaling zero Kelvin in a finite number of steps. That's a bit more advanced. The role of electric current, voltage, and magnetic fields, including ferromagnetism, diamagnetism, paramagnetism. 
at what heats do these materials increase, de decrease their magnetic properties, what voltages, amperages exist in the solar interior, exterior. The role of thermally conducting and insulating material during stellar evolution when it cools and becomes what is called a planet. I also need to add in here the role of heat sinks, such as outer space being a giant heat sink. I have that written somewhere else, I think. The role of superconducting material. The role of superconducting electromagnetic storage mechanisms, or SESMs. Those are pretty uh, interesting. Hydraulic and pneumatic properties of material under extreme temperatures and pressures and chemistry changes. Engineering terms regarding viscosity, the Reynolds number, laminar flows, turbulent flows inside of uh, a lot of the fluid as the heat radiates to the to the central regions of the star as it as the core cools. So similar to the magma uh, plumes that we currently have on the Earth, those plumes were vastly bigger. Then you have uh, gas laws, the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, pressure volume, amount, the ideal gas constant, and temperature of the gas, respectively. You know, Boyle's law, Charles's law, Gabriel Sachs law, you know that stuff. The rock cycle during late stages of star evolution, physical changes of matter, including weathering and erosion. Sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rocks during the rock cycle. Overview the difference between deposition and, sim and sedimentary rock formation and the thermodynamic phase transition of deposition. They're very different. Where gas directly transitions to solid as in ice crystals from water vapor. That's a very important concept to understand. And the importance of physical deposition at much higher temperatures and pressures beyond STP or standard temperatures and pressures, which is very pervasive in a lot of chemistry books. I need to put the planet core formation timetable on this sucker. I need to put anodes and cathodes. I already wrote that earlier. The formation of life on the star as it evolves. The macroscopic dissipative system, the star itself, forming uncountable microscopic dissipative systems, which is overviewed by the Miller-Urey experiment, which tried to prove the Oprin's hypothesis of life surreptitiously coming to be abiogenically, abi meaning inor inorganic material making organic material from natural processes. Um, the role of entropy during stellar evolution, changing concentrations of fluid with respect to changing gas, liquid, and supercritical pressures and temperatures. The role of effusion, solid state and surface chemistry, including the role of molecular and elemental catalysts, including platinum in the beginnings of biological catalysts such as enzymes. That's a very big one. Photosynthesis, photochemical reactions, and the role of magnesium core inside of photocells. Chemical kinetics, meaning matter in motion, liquids, gases, supercritical fluids, and plasmas. Differential rotation in stars is similar to each other as they evolve. Colligative properties of solutions and mixtures. Crystallization, the process of polymerization inside of gas giants, including hydrocarbons. Meaning, I believe hydrocarbons are biogenically created. It doesn't, they don't come from decomposing uh, uh, animal matter and plant matter. Soaps and surfactants, um, chemical, e blah, chemical equilibrium and feedback loops during stellar evolution in early, middle, and late stages. Population 1, 2, 3, and 4 stars. Uh, feedback loops, the role of materials critical ionization velocity, the evolution of the star's various magnetic fields into global magnetic fields, including the star's production of an internal dynamo. From de disorganized to coherent, and is there really a dynamo? How is the thing f is the thing actually produced? And the offset magnetic properties of Uranus and Neptune. Does the signal recent capture by the sun? The inner objects have very close magnetic field orientations to each other; the others do not. That's a very strange coincidence, don't you think? Intermolecular forces such as the role of oils and lubricants. Does oil allow for rock movement sliding in the effusion of oil? How would that play into the thing? Uh, friction, simple molecules, Markland convection is a big one when you have the materials ionization velocity or ionization potentials. I need to put that in another spot in here. Um, natural battery, many cells, and electrolytic cells, meaning one cell formation, plasma as electrolytic substance, charge carrier subject to field alignment, permeability and remnants of material, meaning magnetic remnants and magnetic permeability. It's endless. Today is July 27th, 2015.